I do realize that most of you here on my YouTube channel are around for sports videos and other similar topics, and you're not completely expecting me to do a video about how to land an airplane. But I'm trying something new. That is the case. I am a certified flight instructor. Aviation is my other passion. So in this video, better, safer, and more consistent landings in six steps. <laughs> Again, full disclosure, I am a certified flight instrument instructor, but I'm not acting as your instructor, so you cannot log any of this. It's only for educational purposes. All right, topic number one for landings is a stabilized approach. And I realize the FAA is already telling you that, but I'm here to tell you there's many different types of stabilized approaches. You might be coming in higher than normal or faster than normal or slower than normal, but as long as your airspeed and altitude don't greatly fluctuate as long as it's all entirely predictable, I consider that to be a stabilized approach. You're not having to make large corrections. You're not having to make large adjustments in pitch or power. That is generally a stabilized approach. Now, if you don't have that stabilized approach, it's a simple correction. You don't make the landing. You go around. You can always go around. Number two when it comes to landings is energy management. It's all about airspeed and altitude. Those are the two main things at your disposal for every descent and landing as a pilot. Airspeed and altitude can often be traded for each other, but there are some consequences, right? If you're too high and maybe you have some airspeed to give up, you'll go a little bit faster by increasing your rate of descent. Uh, let's say you're coming in too fast and you want to slow things up. Well, you'll hold the nose off, but what that will do is have you a little bit higher than normal because you're not descending, coming down as much as normal. So again, you want to manage that. All of it goes into a stabilized approach, but airspeed and altitude are your two main considerations. If you can balance them in harmony, you're generally going to have nice landings. I've brought some props. For number three, when you think about the last few seconds of making a good and safe landing, there are three very different but important stages to consider. I'll begin with number one, which is the descent still. You're coming down to the runway again at that nice stabilized approach, but quickly you transition that into the round out. Now, I don't have a runway here, but you're imagining the plane going from a descent to leveling out, maybe sitting in some ground effect over the runway, hopefully approaching the touchdown point, the aiming point that you've been trying for. And then eventually you'll get into the flare, which is bringing the nose up ever so slightly to bleed off those last couple knots of airspeed. And that's when the plane lands itself. More on that in just a second. But if you can identify those three different stages, the descent, the round out, and the flare, you're much better off. Too often, student pilots put all those three steps into one. It's kind of the round out into the or the descent into the round out into the flare, and it's kind of messy. There's, there's not three distinct parts. If you can make them very crisp as a pilot, I'm descending, okay, now I'm rounding out, okay, now I'm going to throw in a nice little flare at the end and touchdown, that's going to make you have way better and more consistent landings. Number four, and you've already heard me say this, let the airplane land itself. If you try and force it on the pavement, you're never usually going to win. First off, in any conventional type gear airplane, you always want to land on your main wheels first. Those are the ones that are made for the landing, not the nose gear. That is definitely the most fragile. But you want to set the airplane down on those main gears, and you want the airplane to come down at its own pace. So that's why airspeed and managing it is so important, because if you hit that round out into the flare within a window of about the five knot range, you're generally going to sit it down quite perfectly. It's going to do all the work for you. A common thing I saw in teaching students how to land was if they were going fast, and even if they had a nice descent into that round out, they generally wouldn't hold the round out. They got impatient. They wanted to put the nose down. They wanted to slam the thing down. They wanted to get the landing happening before the airplane was ready for it. I'm telling you right now, the best thing to do in that situation, if you are a handful of knots too fast, into the round out and flare, just hold it right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Uh, let it kind of sit right there. And then eventually it will come down and make the landing for you. And that brings me to my second to last point here. Airspeed is everything because if you're hitting the target airspeed, your descent's going to be good, your round out's going to be good, and the transition into that flare and ultimately landing is going to be good. But the other part of that is how much runway are you using? I told you about being patient. Well, guess what? If you have a 2,200 foot strip and you're holding that round out and flare for 1,500 feet, 
that's not going to make for a safe or great landing. That's going to make for an interesting slash dangerous landing. So you definitely don't have all day in this, but again, patience is important and hitting the right airspeed is important for the airplane to land itself. Airspeed, so critical. Get in the window of airspeed you need. And then my last tip here, number six, might be among the most important. It is last, but definitely not least. You always need to have a mental picture of outside the airplane. Now, a lot of times in landing, you'll hear instructors and other pilots reminding you that your peripheral vision is so important, and it is. You want to see your airplane come down on the horizon, and you want to see the horizon kind of come up in your windscreen. And you don't necessarily want to be looking 20 feet or even 50 feet out ahead of the nose. You want to have your eyes as far down focused as they can on the horizon and maybe even the opposite end of the landing runway. But you also want to have an external picture of what the airplane is doing throughout the entire descent and landing process. For example, you want to let your brain see and think about the airplane with a slight nose down attitude. Maybe that's a little bit too much. You want to think about the airplane as you're flying it with a level deck attitude here. And then ultimately, when you just start to flare, you want to envision in your mind what the airplane is doing as if you were standing outside of it, as if maybe you were like flying flight simulator. It's one of those things where if I showed you video of your landing afterwards, you could probably diagnose it and say, oh, I quickly and easily see what was wrong here. But I'm trying to get you to do that in real time. I want you to see what your plane looks like as you're flying it. Now, don't get distracted. If you're a beginner here, don't put too many things into your head. But as you start to get into the repetition of making safe landings and you want to start making great, consistent landings, always take your brain and your mind space out of the cockpit and envision what the airplane looks like from the outside. What's its attitude? What's its relationship to the ground and runway environment? And I always feel like that will help you understand what the airplane's doing and will help you make better, safer, and more consistent landings. Hey, let me know if you tried any of these things or if you have tips of your own, add them below in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.